Hello Safari fans, welcome to Safari TV, let me tell you a story. So the story I'm going to tell you today is about how we found our second biltong supplier. As you probably know, we run a catering company, we sell biltong, we get the majority of our biltong from our butcher, but it's quite a small producer so we can't make enough for us. So we, over the last, well, since we started pretty much, have been on the hunt to find the perfect biltong. Five years in, we're on our seventh supplier. Um, the reason being for that, the last person we used to use had fantastic quality meats, but the spice mix just wasn't quite right for us. We asked them about using our own spices because we make our biltong for ourselves, and we asked them if we could do that, and the cost of one single batch production um, for us using our own spices was the cost it would cost us to set up our own biltong company. So we considered it and learned that it would take us about nine months from that day until all the tests were approved and all that before we could start selling it. It would also be a lot of work, which I don't necessarily have time for. As luck would have it, we were down in Nairsborough for the, the UK version of the Tour de France a couple of years ago. Um, I narrowly missed getting my van blown up by, <laughs> by the anti-terror squad because the police sent me on the wrong road. So the little zebra van was on a road with armed police and helicopters above it. Thankfully, they saw sense and realized that we were just selling <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this, this lady came up to me, she said, oh, one of my mates makes biltong, it's good, we'll let you get in touch and all that sort of stuff. We did, the stuff is great, and that's why we sell barefoot biltong now. Barefoot biltong, I'll get a, a, a closer close-up of the product. <laughs> they use grass-fed British beef. Tongue twister for you again, I won't show you the previous takes. The spice mixes are great, they do an original, they do a chilli one as well. Now the chilli here is not overly chillied. We're maybe working in the future on one of our sort of hellfire spiced ones for those of you that love a bit of heat. But for now, the Biltong chilli, this one here, is is what I describe as seasoned with chilli. It's got a nice little a bit of a chilli flavour and a little buzz of heat, but it's, it's certainly nothing extreme. They also do paleo versions, which are gluten free. You've got Biltong chips, you've got Druvors, you have chilli bites, I think they do it as well. Let me check my notes, check my notes. Better to reuse than to recycle, remember that. For my benefit, before we go any further, Barefoot also do a little South African shop so you can get South African sweets and things. I'll go into a little bit more detail, but Jack's sent me some of this cider here. I'm a great cider fan. Really the only two ciders that I've tried from South Africa are Hunter's, which is alright, and Savannah, which to me is just pure chemical weirdness. I don't know how people like it, but there you go, they do. So this is going to be a lovely one. Look at the frosting on that bottle. I love the design on this bottle. The great thing is it's from a hot country, which means it's in a smaller bottle than most ciders, which means means it's quite handy to hold and drink as a bottle instead of one of these 500ml monstrosities you're supposed to hold. You beer drinkers get it all. Depending on how I've edited this, I already said I love the design on there, just a load of nice little X's. On the front it says Golden Delicious Cider, it's 4.5% which is a little low for me but it says keep your eye on the prize. Hmm. Uh, other than that, contains sulfites, everything does nowadays, nothing much going on, although it is from Crafty Brands, ah, Crafty Brands, but they're in Niederberg, which if you don't know is a fantastic wine growing region. Right, let's give this a go. Hopefully, it won't taste anything like Savannah. And first sniff out the bottle, it is it's a very sort of golden delicious apple-y. Is that what I said on the front? I think it might be. Hopefully again that's not psychosomatic. Colour wise it is a pale to deep straw. Yeah, yellowy apples. Mmm. And it tastes fantastic. Truly tastes fantastic. To me, I would have preferred a little touch more sourness, maybe a touch more alcohol in it, but that is just me. Um, other than that, that is 10 out of 10. It's not perfect to my taste, but it is perfect as it is. Um, one of the best ciders I've tried in a long while. This is available from www.barefootbiltong.co.uk, might be .com actually, better check. Website address in the description. Now I've used, I've used a few different websites for my South African stuff over the years. Straight off the bat, one of the advantages with Barefoot is that it's three quid postage, no matter what you buy, you could buy 50 kilos of stuff, it's going to cost you three quid. If you just buy one thing, it doesn't work out too well, but who's going to buy one thing from this place, man? 
Another thing that I noticed was that stuff like, I think it was Mainstay Cane, I could be wrong on the figures here. No, it wasn't, it was Amarula. Amarula, 15 quid a bottle, that's cheaper than you can get it in like supermarkets over here. Fantastic prices, of course, some things. Your Fanta grape's gonna cost you a little more than Fanta Fanta over here. But... Well, I remember, they also sell our sauces on their website, so if you want to buy our sauces and you want to save a bit of postage, you want to get some South African stuff plus our sauces, get it from Jack's, and you won't have to pay our postage on top. Our shakalaka is available there. There is also Koo shakalaka available there, which is a tin of vegetables in a sort of light spice. Um, she's got all sorts of stuff going on. Their last event would have been the Northeast Chili Festival, which I'm sure would have went really, really well, especially with their Hellfire, which is one of the hottest sauces in the world. Would you believe it? You should believe it, because I said it. And I'll, I'll just give you an idea of some of the other stuff that they sell on here. You can get, personal favourite of mine, Ghost Pops. You can get Fizz Pops. You can get, what does that say? Oh. Just noticed on the postage that it's free over a certain amount as well. I mentioned Amarula, you can get ripe figs. Woohoo! Nutty crust. You can get chappies. Not that chappy. And get zoo biscuits. Special special treat when my parents were leaving me in the house by myself when I was un underage. The aforementioned Fanta grape. And finally, a big personal favourite of mine, the Nosh Bar. A couple of things that I forgot to mention on that were that you can get safari fruit dainties. They are nothing to do with us. Uh, Van der Hum, of course. And Jack's also makes a, a bry salt, which is really, really nice. It's kind of got biltong spices through it. It's a nice salt. It's slightly smoked as well, from what I remember. Stick a little bit of that on your food. Job's a good one. So I think I'll just finish this off. Um, like I said, plenty of stuff on the website, great prices and great stuff, great products. So see you next time. If you want to see what we're doing with this one, type in between two tubes into your YouTube search bar. What a treat. Sorry if that was a little bit too fast paced for you. I've just been filming quite a high intensity video. Um, there's a little clue to that over here. I completely neglected to try some. Got too excited by the cider, I think. Um, this is one minor flaw with Jax's stuff is that people tend to bring it back to us quite a lot and say they can't get into it. Uh, because it, it can tear off above the seal. There's not much that can be done about that, but using reusable technologies. When we sell it, we always get it with no fat and medium. So if you're buying it from us, you know why it's pretty much because the, the British public don't like anything else. Um, mm, so if I can hold that in the light, excuse me. Hmm. The card ran out. I forgot to delete our monkey land steak sauce recipe video. I don't really know where that got to. Like I said, if I hold it up there, I can see sort of a deep rose colour coming through it. One thing worth mentioning about uh, Biltong compared to beef jerky is Biltong, especially this Biltong, is air dried, not oven dried. If it's oven dried, it's quite pathetic. It's far too hard. It's not very nice. Lovely. If you go on their website as well, you can choose the amount of fat you want, whether it's medium, wet or dry when it comes through to you. Um, all sorts of options on there. Perfect, hold on, want some? Yeah, one.